Was a master's degree in mechanical engineering worth it? That's a question I've been asked countless times since graduating. If you're watching this video, you're probably curious about the same thing, whether it's worth two years of your life, not to mention the money just to get a master's degree in mechanical engineering. So in this video, I'll talk all about my experience and everything that went into the decision-making process so you can decide if a master's degree in mechanical engineering is right for you. I completed my undergrad in mechanical engineering at Boston University and later pursued my master's in mechanical engineering at Tsinghua University in Beijing, China, a school ranked in the top 15 worldwide for engineering and STEM programs. So why did I decide to go to grad school instead of jumping into an entry-level mechanical engineering job? Why would I spend two years of my life studying abroad when I could have been making upwards of $150,000 in those same two years as a mechanical engineer in the US. Well, you see, it's not as simple as just get a master's degree and you'll land your dream job. A lot of mechanical engineering jobs that you've probably seen in places like LinkedIn don't even require a master's degree. So let's dive into whether my decision paid off in terms of skills, opportunities, and career growth. I'll break down what I got out of the program, how it affected my career, and if it was ultimately worth it. So why did I choose to pursue my master's degree at Tsinghua University halfway around the world in Beijing instead of staying closer to home in Ohio? I was fortunate enough to receive a full ride scholarship that covered tuition, housing, and even provided a monthly stipend of $400. Now, the tuition for this two year program at Tsinghua University was around $11,000, while US universities can charge upwards of $40,000 per year. So, this was a massive financial relief for me. I didn't have to take on any debt for my education. This scholarship also gave me the freedom to focus and entirely on learning and gaining experience rather than worrying about working part-time to cover for living expenses. So of course, financials played a huge role in my decision. Another reason was my family connection. My grandparents live in Beijing and having that support system abroad was really reassuring. Being so far away from home in an unfamiliar culture can be daunting, but having family there made it a lot less intimidating. Then there was the opportunity to develop develop skills and stand out in a competitive job market. Study in a fast paced, technologically advanced country like China felt like a perfect way to add an international dimension to my career. I was especially drawn to China's role as a manufacturing giant and its close ties to the global supply chain. Many companies design products in the US and manufacture them in China. And being able to speak Chinese and understand Chinese business culture seemed like a powerful tool for my future career. This language skill definitely paid off because it's something that employers have found impressive. It's rare and valuable for engineers to have both technical and cross communication skills. Lastly, I just wanted to step out of my comfort zone. Moving to a completely different country, navigating a new language, and learning in a completely different academic environment was both exciting and nerve-wracking. But that's part of what pushed me to go. Growth happens when you challenge yourself. Now let's get into the actual program. I pursued a Master of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering, which involved both coursework and research. When you do a Master's in Mechanical Engineering, you can choose between a Master of Science degree or a Master of Engineering degree. Generally, an MSc degree in Mech E requires you to take courses with a focus on research and writing a thesis, while an MEng degree is more course heavy and might require you to complete a project. However, each university's program will be different, so don't worry about which one you choose too much. For me, the MSc path just seemed like the right fit because I was eager to dive into research and take on a challenge that would push my technical skills to the next level. I worked in a vehicle crashworthiness and material testing group led by Professor Zhou Qing. My thesis focused on a quasi-static and dynamic behavior of steel aluminum adhesive and self-piercing rivet automotive joints under mixed-mode loading conditions. 
conditions. Now, I know that might sound a bit technical, but in simpler terms, it involved testing how materials joined together by adhesive bonding and riveting behave under a wide range of strain rates and loading modes. The research itself focused on material testing, solid and fracture mechanics, constitutive modeling, and finite element analysis. Many employers found my thesis to be impressive because it was relevant to many real world engineering problems, especially in the automotive industry. Tsinghua University also requires students to publish their thesis in an international journal in order to graduate. That really stressed me out at the time, but it really forces you to produce high quality research. I was fortunate enough to publish three papers in three different journals during my time there, one as the first author in SAE and two where I made large enough contributions to be added as an author in Energy and IEEE. Apart from writing a thesis, the program also required us to complete a minimum of 26 credit hours within the first year. The second year was fully dedicated to research, writing the thesis, and getting it published. Like most graduate programs, we had a group of core mandatory courses to take along with some electives. Here's something I noticed right off the bat in grad school, especially in China. The engineering and math courses were significantly more challenging and theoretical compared to what I experienced during undergrad. I took linear algebra in undergrad and I thought it was difficult, but it was nothing compared to numerical analysis in grad school. In this class, we learned about stochastic algorithms, LU decomposition, singular value decomposition, the Jacobi method, gauss sido method, steepest descent method, successive over relaxation, as well as their applications. Now, even though my major was mechanical engineering, it was within the Department of Automotive Engineering, which is now called the School of Vehicle and Mobility. So naturally, many of the courses I took had a strong automotive focus. That being said, about 80% of the fundamental engineering concepts that were covered in my grad school courses were things I already learned in my undergrad studies. Grad school wasn't about learning completely new ideas, but rather building upon those concepts and applying them to solve more challenging real world engineering problems. The courses were all taught in English and included vehicle control engineering, lightweight design, automotive engineering one and two, numerical analysis, internal combustion engines, automotive crash safety, and elective courses like Chinese and philosophy. These courses were a lot more theoretical compared to my undergrad courses, so I can't say they helped me develop my practical skills like hands-on design or manufacturing techniques, but they did without question strengthen my theoretical knowledge, engineering analysis, and problem-solving ability. Now, one of my favorite platforms that helped me excel in all of my grad school classes was Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant features thousands of interactive lessons in math, physics, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant breaks down complex problems into easy to understand parts, leveraging a first principles approach. Their lessons foster problem solving skills by allowing you to experiment with concepts. This method is proven to be six times more effective than conventional lecture based learning. Brilliant's lessons are crafted by professors, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, and Google, so you will be learning from the best. Brilliant builds critical thinking skills through active learning, not memorization, so you become a much better thinker. It also encourages the habit of daily learning critical to both personal and professional growth. Brilliant's engaging bite-sized lessons allow you to learn wherever, whenever, so you can prioritize your time. One of my favorites is Brilliant's recently launched course, Case Study Unlocking Rental Value on Airbnb, that trains you to visualize and analyze data to see trends and make better informed decisions using real data sets from Airbnb. To try out everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash engineering gone wild or scan the QR code on the screen or you can check out the link in the description below. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So after all that, what did I really gain from these two years? Did I learn anything useful? The short answer is absolutely. The skills I developed, especially in research, material testing, solid mechanics, data cleaning, filtering, analysis, and visualization, as well as material modeling and advanced numerical simulations are directly applicable to many areas of mechanical engineering. Completing my thesis in particular helped me think outside the box, take a multifaceted problem, break it down, run simulations, test materials, and develop innovative solutions. But beyond the technical skills, 
shows the networking opportunities perhaps were even more invaluable. Grad school, especially in a global hub like Tsinghua University, gave me the chance to build connections with people from all over the world and from different industries. For instance, I met one of my best buddies from Canada there. We would study together, grab drinks at the bar, and hit the nightclubs on weekends. Honestly, without his companionship, I don't know if I would have survived grad school in China. Sometimes it's those small connections that make a huge difference. And looking back now, I'm so grateful that everything turned out the way it did. Funny enough, he ended up working at Apple, just like the majority of my colleagues in my research group, who also ended up working at Apple and Tesla. Some of them pursued academia, becoming professors, while others went on to work at big tech and automotive companies like BYD, Ford, and Baidu. Having that network not only helps you grow, but opens doors that you might not have thought possible. So network wherever you are. Now the million dollar question is, did the degree actually help me land better or higher paying jobs? Yes, it did, but with a few caveats. In mechanical engineering, a master's degree doesn't always guarantee you'll make more money right away, but it does make you stand out in a pool of job candidates. The deeper expertise I gained through my thesis made me a more attractive candidate for more specialized roles, roles that wouldn't be open to me with just a bachelor's degree. You'll also have more bargaining power to negotiate a higher salary. My international experience also caught the attention of employers who are looking for engineers with global perspectives. That being said, how much a master's degree benefits you will depend on what you put into it. It's not enough to just coast through grad school and hope the degree will do all the talking for you. You have to actively look for ways to apply what you're learning, whether through research, internships, or projects. So was it worth it? For me, absolutely. The skills, the experience living abroad, the networking, the fact that I got to graduate debt-free, all of this made grad school worth it. But I also recognize that everyone's situation is different. If you're considering whether a master's degree in mechanical engineering is worth it, think about it in terms of costs and benefits. The cost is how much time and money you need to sacrifice along with the opportunity costs in terms of lost income from not working full-time as a mechanical engineer. The benefits will vary depending on your school's program and location, faculty, networking opportunities, and obviously yourself. You need to think about your financial situation, your career goals, and what you're hoping to gain from this degree and what you're willing to give up. And remember, the key to getting the most out of any graduate program and most things in life is how much effort you're willing to put into it. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video was able to give you some insight into whether pursuing a master's degree is right for you. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here where I talk about how I went from failing to becoming one of the top students in my mechanical engineering class at BU. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.